What's up, guys? Listen, come in, sit down, and shut the door. I already told you guys I'm going live later to talk about Diddy, Chalice Records, and the bing, 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 bing. But y'all, let's talk about something else. It looks like we have gotten pretty much confirmation, okay, based upon information and belief that Tierra Marie actually is the person that is suing uh, Diddy. If you guys don't know, Diddy's been being sued by a bunch of Jane Doe's. Some are being represented by, I believe, New York attorney Tyrone A. Blackburn. Others are being represented by New York attorney Douglas Wigmore. Now, here's the thing. Douglas Wigmore has a case where there is a woman that is suing Diddy that wants to be renamed a Jane Doe, okay? Diddy's team actually were going to file a response to the woman. First, they asked that her name be revealed to the public, okay? And Douglas Wigmore was like, that ain't happening, bro. You can go, right? Then they turned around and said, this was a weird event. But they said, well, you know what, Your Honor? Actually, hold that thought. Because we want to file a response. But we want our response to her claims to be sealed. Because she is a notable public figure. She's a notable public figure. As a matter of fact, let me pull this up for you. Okay, I found the exact words. Sorry, I found the exact words. Diddy's lawyers believe public identity, uh, the public could identify woman suing him for alleged 2003 gang blank. If latest court documents aren't sealed, accuser's name is not revealed, but details is said to be enough to expose her, okay? Now, they literally said that um, they were afraid that they said that basically this woman, although Diddy opposed Do Jane Doe's demand to remain anonymous, his litigator, Jonathan D. Davis, is now asking U.S. District Judge Jessica G.L. Clark to seal the most recent developments in the case. Now, the motion said... Uh, on December 11, 2023, Jane Doe moved for an entry of an order permitting her to proceed anonymously as Jane Doe. Although the Combs defendants are opposing the motion, they seek to seal, to seal the defendant's memorandum because they're saying that the opposition brief does not reveal the plaintiff's name, but it does refer to certain facts that plaintiff uh, about the plaintiff that the Combs defendants have learned because her identity was disclosed by plaintiff's counsel. The facts included are pertinent to the motion, but the Combs defendants want to disclose them under seal to avoid any possibility that a third party could recognize plaintiff's identity. Plaintiff has a public facing identity that could potentially be determined from the content of the opposition brief. Now, why is that so important? Because if you look at the timeline, 2003, right? Detroit, Tara Marie is from Detroit, okay? 2003 timeline matches up. Harvey Pierre, Diddy, Bad Boy. But get this. And this is the most important part. There was an unnamed producer. Okay? The, the producer was named in the documents, but his name was stricken from there. Harvey Pierre was the said to had essayed her in the bathroom while she was 18 candles, weren't on her birthday cake. Bought her in a private jet. Okay? It's important to remember. And then bought her to New York, where it was Diddy and an unnamed producer. And they pr proceeded to go crazy horrifically on her. Now, Tara Marie is public facing. One, Tara Marie has already been involved in litigation that is not so good. She's involved with 50 Cent. If you don't know, don't know, 50 Cent is busy harassing Tara Marie, which is actually really cruel, but whatever. 50 Cent is funny, but he is a cruel person when he wants to be. But forget all that, right? Because how did we put it together that this is probably most likely Andre, um, whatever? Well, let's get into this. It comes from an article with Russell Simmons. He's being pulled into a uh, lawsuit with L.A. Reid. Okay, are you following me? Why is this important? Because if you follow my old lives, I did a live where I let it know that Diddy's team is now being represented by Jocelyn Maxwell's old lawyer and Sean Hawley. Sean Hawley, I, I would imagine, is representing him on the settlement side for the civil 
And Bobby Sternum is representing him on the uh, criminal side. If you guys don't know, this woman has represented Jose Maxwell. I know Jose is in jail. She's also represented Osama bin Laden's right hand man, right? That was involved in a lot of stuff, right? She also represented um, Harvey Weinstein, is it? A bunch of people she's represented. Even the guy that went kapow in the Heathrow airport, she's represented all of those. Why is that important? Because that's who's new. That's who is new to Diddy's legal team. But something got interesting, got leaked in um, the articles about Russell Simmons being dragged into L.A. Reid. If you guys don't know, Miss Dixon, I'm sorry, Drew Dixon, Drew Dixon is suing um, L.A. Reid for S.A., now he demanded, she, he wanted to see records. He wanted to see this. He wanted to see that. He's even saying that, who is it? Um, Russell was the one that graped her, so it couldn't be him. I don't know how he thinks he's going to get away with this. But here's the thing, right? L.A. Reid wants to see Drew Dixon's psychological, psychiatric, therapeutic, and counseling records. Um, he also wants to see all communications, all the stuff. Here's where it becomes interesting. L.A. Reid, this motion to see all those documents was made by a name that you might actually recognize. Reid also seeks Dixon psychological, psychiatric, therapeutic, and counseling records according to documents filed by renowned New York attorney Bobby Sternheim who served as lead defense attorney for convicted sex trafficker to say Maxwell. So let me get this straight. Diddy and L.A. Reid have the same lawyer? Oh, but it goes on. Reid has vehemently denied the allegations and hired renowned Los Angeles pit bull defense attorney, Sean Hawley, who represented convicted rapists and, Scient mm, can I say, and Scientologist Danny Masterman. Hmm, that's interesting. So Diddy and L.A. Reid both have the same attorneys? Get this. Drew Dixon, meanwhile, wants L.A. Reid to fork over flight logs for his private jet, surveillance footage from Artista Record uh, offices. So his private jet, you mean the private jet that was moved, used to use? It could have been, or maybe it was Diddy's jet. But there was a private jet that was used to move Tierra Marie, if this is her, okay? It's based upon information to believe. And I am trying to work this out, okay, um, to come over. But even then, surveillance footage from artistic records offices and all documents and files related to the company's events, retreats, music artists, along with a bucket of HR documents. Let's also not forget, and this is the most important thing, um, yeah. Remember in Tierra Marie, well, in this Jane Doe's lawsuit that I believe is Tierra Marie, we will see. Remember how they said that she was flown over in a private jet from Detroit to in a music studio with Diddy, an unnamed music producer who he's named in documents, but not, he hasn't been released publicly, and also Harvey Pierre. You don't find that interesting? Y'all, I think we have confirmation that, that Jane Doe may well be Tierra Marie. Too many things are cross-referencing. Too many things don't make, make sense. And too many things. You cannot tell me that it's a coincidence that Diddy and L.A. Reid had the same attorneys representing for the same thing. What would be the overlap? Could it be that L.A. Reid is the third producer that is named in the Jane Doe's lawsuit. I don't know. For certain, we're going to have to wait until the courts actually come out. But y'all, where there's smoke, where there's smoke, where there's smoke, there is definitely Diddy. Also, I do want to say that if you Google, L.A. Reid talks extensively about working with Tierra Marie and how he thought Tierra Marie was going to be a bigger star. Yeah. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.